get down to chapter number 5 in the fifth chapter we learn about business level strategies earlier we had learned about corporate level strategies we we'll now go to business level strategies where there are two important things to learn one is what is called the general or generic strategic alternatives of michael porter and the second one is michael porter's five force model so there are two learnings involved one is michael porter's five force model two is michael porter's three generic strategic alternatives those three generic strategic alternatives are a cost leadership b differentiation c focus there is a d there is a fourth one that has been added in recent time it's called the best cost provider otherwise the generic strategic alternatives are three in number where cost leadership differentiation and focus once we are done with that we'll go and look at michael porter's five forces of competition like he says that when there is competition to know who wins we need to look at five forces we'll first begin with general generic strategic alternative we'll call it gsa to keep it easy gsa 1 will be cost leadership gsa 2 will be differentiation gsa 3 will be focus and the new one will be called gsa 4 which is called best cost provider So let's begin with GSA one. GSA one is about cost leadership. These are companies of which you are familiar. You are familiar with Big Bazaar. You are also familiar with Walmart because we have picked up those examples earlier. Maybe you will do well to Google about Walmart in case you don't know much about it. And then there is a third one with company of which you have heard, not as steel. And we are now going to understand what is the thing that connect these three companies the first company was what walmart the second was big bazaar the third is tata steel the walmart is associated with being the company that provides products at the lowest lowest cost the equivalent of walmart in india is big bazaar big bazaar seeks to provide products at the lowest cost tata steel is a company which long years ago almost 25 years ago when india opened up its economy Tata Steel found that imported steel was cheaper than steel produced at Tata, which meant which meant that imported steel was cheaper than steel produced at Tata. Consequently, which people wanted to only import steel rather than buy homemade steel. So the Tata therefore engaged or went on a major revamp. They went on a cost reduction drive, and consequent to the cost reduction drive over a period of the next 5 years they turned out to be the company across the entire world whose cost was the lowest lowest delivered cost that means the cost of steel as it would reach your factory not tata steel factory the cost inclusive of transportation to reach your factory was the lowest in the world and of course you already know about walmart walmart is famous for being uh, selling products at the lowest cost Walmart also has this philosophy that in the next 30 days after you buy a product from them, suppose you buy a pen from them at 12 rupees, and in the course of the next one month, the same pen you are able to buy elsewhere at 10 rupees, then Walmart will repay you two rupees. Or if you want to talk about the American currency, dollar. So the idea behind picking up these three pictures is to talk about strategy number one, which is cost leadership. Cost leadership means producing. products at the lowest delivered cost the so provider of lowest delivered cost example are those three first you put out the objective then you write the example then after we learn learn about the next five bullets after that and only after that you will make note of how first you will make note of objective that means the purpose the purpose of gsa 1 is that you want to be the provider of lowest delivered cost examples of companies with lowest delivered cost are walmart in us big bazaar in india tata steel also in india the first two are retail companies the third one is of course a manufacturing company now how does somebody become a cost leader cost leader means what the cost of manufacture is lowest 
not highest. Cost leader means the guy whose cost is lowest. What should a person do in order to keep the cost lowest? First important thing is that he must practice cost control and cost reduction as a religion. Wherever he can cut cost, he must cut cost. Whenever he can control cost, he must control cost. So if between two sellers, so if I am Walmart and there are two people who are selling to me, the products are alike. If the other guy gives me one rupee less, I should buy from the guy who gives me one rupee less. So long as the product's quality is unstable. Okay? So cost control and cost reduction should be practiced as a religion. Second thing is components must be standardized. You must limit the models because if you standardize, the biggest advantage is that you can buy huge quantity at discount. For example, just to give you an example, I know this is not a great example but a useful one. If you buy pens that look alike, then if you are going to, if you need 1000 pens, instead of buying 100 different models of 10 pens each, if you buy only one model, all 1000 looking alike, then you can drive a huge bargain. Of course, there is a disadvantage that customer may not like the pen that you are offering, but you take that risk because there is that alternative that you can sell that particular product pen which others are selling at X, you might be able to sell at 75% of X. The customers might like to do that. That's the second thing. Third thing, if you want to reduce cost more so in a manufacturing company, you must do forward integration. What is forward integration? Buying not raw material, raw material is backward. Not franchise outlets, that may not be the best way to word it. Okay, in other words, it means taking greater control over your customer's business, the business as the customer runs. Franchise outlets are also fine. Backward integration is where you pick up greater control over the way your supplier's business runs. Horizontal integration is where you buy up companies which are your competitors. So if you can do forward integration, backward integration, and horizontal integration, and you are a manufacturing company, you can cut and keep your cost low. You can also cut and keep your cost low in a manufacturing company if you are good at engineering, if you are good at manufacturing, and if you are good at distribution. Okay? Cost, all these four will apply for manufacturing companies. First one will apply also for retail outlets like uh, Big Bazaar and Walmart. Last one is that if you want to be a cost leader, you need to use technology very, very extensively. You need to use technology very extensively. I'll first explain that, that example of Amazon. It is not that you don't know. Today, it is not considered to be routine, considered to be passe. But when Amazon first came long years ago, almost 20 years ago in 1999, some of the things that they did were stunning. Today, it is, today everybody takes it for granted. But when it first came, the few things that it did was stunning and it was able to do that because of technology. Let me give you an example. Suppose there is a corner shop, there is a shop, this is a Kirana shop where you go and buy, where, the, where a family goes and buys, let us say, rice, meat, that corner shop. What is the advantage of that shop? Personal. So the guy will possibly ask you, Oh, last time you bought three bottles of Coke, have you forgotten to buy now? Then you will remember, yeah, yeah, last time I bought three bottles, now I have forgotten, it's not on my list and therefore you, you buy. That guy might also tell you that your friend, whoever is your friend, and he also shops there, he'll say your friend this time bought this notebook, would you want to buy that notebook? So it was personalized. Now when you buy on the internet, you can't get it personalized. But Amazon, when it came in 1999, in its early years, it started personalizing. Like, for example, if you went and bought a book of, let us say, Chetan Bhagat, of course, Chetan Bhagat wasn't around in 1999. He came up in 2005. But nevertheless, or if you went and bought a book by, say, Jeffrey Archer, the Amazon will immediately pop up and say, these are the other books that Jeffrey Archer has written. Somewhere on the left side, it will pop up and say, these are the people. So these are the people who have read Arthur's book. 
and they would put out some well known names of people who have put out archer's book next time seven days later you go and buy the same archer's book for example if you buy the same book of the same author it would actually say that you bought this book one week ago do you still want to buy it and uh, that that made people terribly excited and uh, the third time when you log on to amazon on the right side it would put out uh, books that you normally read so it, it, in other words it became extremely personalized today this concept of personalization has been taken to its extreme for example ola you know the app ola you get a discount code you try that on your friends discount on your friends mobile with this telephone number it will not work what does that mean it means they have actually personalized it they have found that either you are traveling a lot or you are not traveling after having traveled in ola earlier therefore they are wanting to give you a discount so personalization has become possible only on account of technology so extensive use of technology will help you do cost or reduce your cost okay so whatever you want to write out of that you do that and then we'll go on to the next few ideas in cost leadership like i have always said in every point wherever you can write examples you write example i have put out example only in technology forward backward horizontal either you put out the example or you say refer chapter number 4 or in whichever chapter that stat so cost leadership will work only in markets that are price sensitive cost leadership will work only in markets where buyers have a low switching cost the switching cost is a phrase that michael porter inaugurated in his buy force model i'll explain that cost leadership will also work only if buyers don't bother about brands cost leadership will work only if buyers have huge bargaining power bargaining power is also an idea which porter introduced but since i have shifted i have chosen that we shall first do the generic strategic alternatives and then do the five force model so i'll have to do some explaining first one is that this works only in price sensitive markets i don't write anything what is a price sensitive market which reacts to changes in prices now you tell me which product in your view forget about the rest of the world in your view your price sensitive that means if i drop the price maybe you might buy more or if i drop the price you will switch over to me rather than to go to somebody else anything where you think that uh, you will uh, switch from one market to another you have to give me an answer sorry mobile mobile is one good example you might choose to shift from let us say airtel to what to jio i think the classic example is jio which has uh, captured the market in a remarkable way and with the current consolidation taking place with arcom they will so they will go still further further up anyway so people might uh, people therefore are price sensitive switching so it will work only in price sensitive market low switching cost means if i'm if i move from let us say uh, airtel to jio do i have a cost earlier i had a cost earlier i had a cost because my number would change and if my number changed that means if there was no number portability then the problem was that the guys who knew my number earlier they will now have to be told about my new number and they'll have problem uh, using that so with number portability coming in the switching cost has become low switching cost means the cost of switching from one product or from one supplier to another okay buyers don't bother about brand so when you buy do you bother about brand which is the product where you are bothered heavily about brand clothing what 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 is the dress that you would prefer to buy peter england any idea whose product is peter england or uh, not only india south of india not only south of india tamil nadu okay so just in case you thought peter england really came from the united states or from england was really peter up there it's not so so you want to buy peter england all right why good for so 
affordable. What is the price? Was affordable once upon a time. No, come. Okay, no, I just want to know what is the price. Thousand rupees a shirt is a lot of money. Eh? Like what? Okay. So how many, how many, uh, how many years does it come, or how many months does it come? So I'm just asking. I want to know. I'm not saying you're wrong. Three years. Three years. Uh, you should actually buy shirts from the footpath. Go to Calcutta. Chennai also is okay, but Calcutta is wonderful. You go and buy shirts from the footpath. They will look good. Only thing there will be no Peter England written there or no Arrow written there. Okay? And those shirts will come for six months. Alright? Those shirts cost 150 rupees. Nobody will know any difference. It will come for six months. Uh, they may not be even 150. They might be even less than that. Anyway, they come for six months. So you can buy... What happened? Something is falling? This is all that we did. We said that cost leadership means lowest delivered cost. We said cost leadership, there are three companies, well-known companies, Walmart which sells at the lowest price. I also said that, no, if you buy a product at, let us say, $12 in Walmart, and within one month you can buy the same product elsewhere at $10, Walmart will return $2 to you. I say, we said that Big Bazaar is the India equivalent of Walmart, and then I narrated one small story about how Tata Steel in 1992 was in bad shape because India opened up its economy and uh, then they embarked on the biggest cost reduction drive across the whole world as a result of which today their product steel, they produce it at the lowest delivered cost. From there we moved on to say that this can be achieved, cost leadership can be achieved through cost control and cost reduction. Then by standardizing components like you know, in, the, in a manufacturing setup, the ideal thing is that if you are manufacturing cars, I am just giving an example, instead of manufacturing cars in five different colors, you might manufacture a car in only one color. That will cut down on cost, but maybe you might lose out on a few customers, but if you can heavily reduce the price, customers would come in. Then we said that there is forward integration, backward integration and horizontal integration, which can be done, which would help in order to reduce cost. And the companies must be good at engineering, manufacturing and distribution in order to cut down on their cost. And we also said that uh, we have to use technology extensively in order to reduce cost. And I was telling about Amazon, uh, which has uh, actually worked like a neighborhood uh, shop uh, because it's able to, with the help of technology, know what you bought in the past, what your friends bought, did they buy whatever you bought. So it gives you all that kind of information. That was just an example to tell you that technology is the single largest driver to reduce cost. Okay. From there we said that if you want to do cost leadership, that cost leadership will be useful only in price sensitive markets. That means in markets where people don't bother about brands, in market where people are ready to switch. So Peter England is at 1000, tomorrow somebody else comes and offers at 800. I'll Let's say I'll switch to 800 because I have no great affinity to Peter England. If that is there, then it works. If I say, no, 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 I will stick with Peter England even if something else is available at 700, that means Peter England has actually built a great brand for itself, then cost leadership will not work. The last thing that we said was that uh, if the buyers have huge bargaining power, if you as a buyer have huge bargaining power, then you can uh, be effective and cost leadership. We also said that this idea of bargaining power and switching cost will be dealt with more extensively when we look at Michael Porter's five force model. Okay? In this chapter, which is basically about business, uh, business, what? business strategies, there are two things that we are going to learn. First thing is what is called generic strategic alternatives, where there are three plus one, four alternatives. We are on the first alternative. And then we will learn about Porter's five force model where there are five forces. Okay? That's the broad summary of what we have done till now. The second important, uh, if you want to make note of this, do that. Write out the relevant examples. Write out what is meant by switching cost. Make note of the idea of portability in, tele in mobile, which reduces the switching cost or which actually makes it non-existent. Buyers don't bother about brands. 
I am not bothered whether it is Peter England or whether it is Arrow or whether it is whatever. I am okay, let us say, even with picking up a shirt in the footpath, so long as it looks reasonably fine, then you are saying that brands are unimportant. For example, you go buy salt. What brand salt people buy at home? You have heard that so often, that's all. Otherwise, it makes no difference. A salt is a salt is a salt. If you see it, will you know this is tartar and this is butter? You would not know. So, it doesn't really make a difference. That is why Tata is a great example of a company which made a product which never had any brand like salt. People talk about Tata salt. No, that, that's incredible for somebody to try make a brand out of a product where no brands were ever there. No brands means nobody ever bothered. People used to go to the shop and ask for salt. Today maybe they ask for Tata salt. Okay. You are done with that? All right. Then after asking ourselves where it will be effective in, we are saying that these are the places which when you see, you know that this company is possibly practicing cost leadership. These guys work at very, very high levels of efficiency. They work at limited perks. I don't know whether you are aware, a company like Wipro is extremely and extremely cost conscious. Maybe because they come from an industry where cutting or keeping costs low was very important. That idea of cost, that idea of being cost conscious and having limited perks runs across the, across the company. I will give you an example. Okay? Inside of Wipro's office, okay, if you find that there is a vehicle that comes, which is... Uh, reasonably an expensive vehicle, you can be sure that that vehicle is not a vehicle that is going to be used by the Wipro employee or that is not a vehicle that is meant for a Wipro guest. It is possibly a supplier who drive, is driving into that vehicle. I do not know whether you are aware that the chairman of Wipro does not fly business class, he flies economy class in India. Internationally, of course, it is a different story, but in India, he flies only economy class. Now, when you see that happening in a company, you realize that people are cost conscious and everybody also becomes cost conscious. The perquisites are limited. There are very clearly defined rules about, you know, when a guy goes from office to outside for work, under what circumstance he is eligible for outside food. For example, if a guy is going for client place work and that client place work is, let's say, within 6 kilometers radius of the office, then he does not get, uh, uh, he is not eligible for reimbursement. That means people are very conscious, the organization is very, very conscious about how they will spend their money and you have to really be there to understand how conscious they are. Rewards are not linked to higher sales, I am not talking about that company now. Rewards are linked to reducing cost. In a company which is conscious about cost reduction, greater rewards are given to a guy who can bring about cost reduction because cost reduction is permanent. Revenue enhancement is temporary. There is intolerance for wastage. Okay, you will find that in those companies, the lights and fans and air conditioners, which is the easiest thing for you and I to understand, are switched off during lunch time. Okay? Uh, the company is very conscious about efficiency, very conscious about wastage, very conscious about how much money people can draw, and it also makes sure that reward is linked to cost reduction. If you see these happening in a company, you can possibly realize that this company is planning to keep cost less and is hoping that it would be the company with the least total cost. Okay. Any doubt on that? Fine. What is the problem with cost leadership as a strategy? Problem number one is, if, since the switching costs are low, Somebody else offers at lower cost, this fellow will run away. Okay? This fellow will run away. You will not have any loyalty towards you. Also, it is not you who is the expert in reducing cost. Anybody can reduce cost. If they watch what you are doing, they can replicate that. If they are able to replicate that, then they will become the least total cost. Sometime later in Porter's value chain analysis, we will learn about why it might be difficult for people to copy. But for the moment, we will just say that somebody else can play copycat. And the third important thing is that today, for example, 
people don't some people don't go to big bazaar because they think in their mind that the quality of the product is not going to be good abroad there are people who don't go to walmart because they have that lurking fear that this is possibly having low quality tata i i think i gave you this example tata motors when it wanted to move from its low price indica cars to higher price cars market survey suggested that people were not interested in tata motors cars at the at the higher price segment because in their mind it always said that tata motors means indica indica means low price car that is the reason why they went in the uh, took over jaguar and bought in uh, what was the other company land rover etc so a reputation for low quality makes it difficult to rebrand low quality even low price i don't want to say that people who offer at low price have low quality but they might sacrifice a little bit on quality because their argument is that there are few things that are really not required for example in a car in a car or in a bike what kind of bike would you like to buy what is one feature that you want in a bike mileage okay that's what people like you and me who are very worried about how much money we spend but otherwise what would you like bike gps what feature gps in the bike itself okay all right then what will you do with gps in the bike slowly you will forget the sense of direction instead of coming to class you will go somewhere else all right what else there there are people who say no i want my vehicle to what pick up very quickly what is the word used up kick start really okay pick up you know they want uh, it to pick up very quickly i ask those guys what is the point in a huge pick up because if you are standing in chennai traffic signal turns green you start and it picks up very quickly what will happen it will go and crash into the next car or it will go and crash into the next bike so what some companies decide is that this kind of pickup is not really required in indian road so they might sacrifice a little bit on pickup so that they can cut down on price and you when you are driving on the highway suddenly find oh the pickup is low so you think this is a low quality product these are things that can work in people's mind okay so these are the possible weaknesses of this strategy very low customer loyalty customer does not stick with you he runs away at the slightest opportunity a reputation for low quality means you cannot rebrand yourself you cannot come out with a top notch product in the mind of people it will always stick that you are a low quality product and others can say copy can okay this is about strategy number 1 which is cost leadership and i put out an example there is nothing much to explain in that you possibly read it okay you can possibly read that it says walmart is a low frill self service store today almost every store is self service but there was a time or at least if you think of your corner shop where the owner used to pick up and do today all services are self service but walmart actually originally what should i say innovated that idea it has an excellent supplier and distribution system that is the reason why it is able to cut cost it helps supplier in their manufacturing process also that's something that's not widely indicated but that is what walmart does it it helps out its suppliers also in its manufacturing process by giving it out ideas so that it can minimize cost for example it tells its supplier that if you give me at a lower price i will give all the order to you all my requirement or 50% of my requirement i'll give it to you so that's one way by which one can achieve cost leadership so any company that is banking on cost leadership will try to do anything and everything to lower the cost so tomorrow if you become an entrepreneur uh, entrepreneur as in even setting up a ca firm or getting into some form of service you might like to look at cost leadership as an alternative as an option or you might do point number 2 what is point number 2 gsa 2 we are okay we have i think we named it no or you might do differentiation or you might do focus those are things that we will understand so that at the end of gsa 3 you will possibly tell us as to what is your choice you done with that that tells you how walmart seeks to achieve 
of leadership in addition to the earlier examples or earlier explanations that we had offered. You done? All right. We now are through with cross leadership. We will now move on to the second one which is differentiation. So we said that there are three generic strategic alternatives. These three generic strategic alternatives were named by Michael Porter. This entire chapter is the work of Michael Porter. So second strategic, uh, sorry, generic strategic alternative is differentiation. Any rough guess what could differentiation mean? What could differentiation mean? Okay. Product should be different or there must be something in the service which makes it stand out in the crowd, okay? Something in the service which makes it stand out in the crowd. For example, how is CCDA different from any other coffee shop that you might go and drink? Coffee shop as in any one of those you know, roadside shops, how is it different? You can sit there any number of hours, try to sit any number of hours in one of those uh, putting it nearby, you know, they'll throw you out, okay? And uh, so that's just one example. We will now pick up more of such examples. 